Great. So thanks um, for NCC and TD for inviting me out to speak tonight. Uh, I'm very grateful. I'm going to be going through um, these slides very quickly about uh, the importance of old growth forests and some conservation measures that we are recommending. Uh, and um, forgive me if I move really fast. I'm going to stay within my seven minutes. I'll watch. <laughs> All right. So just a few photos of some of the incredible forests out here in uh, British Columbia. I'm from Vancouver Island, and the area around Port Renfrew in particular, uh, the southwestern Vancouver Island, has some incredible giants. There's the biggest uh, vegetable in the country there. <laughs> That's the uh, Red Creek fir. It's actually the world's biggest Douglas fir tree, 13 feet wide, about 240 feet tall. There's the San Juan spruce. This is Canada's largest spruce tree. Oh, it might have just been surpassed by one in Haida Gwaii, but this is a phenomenal tree. And um, it's near Port Renfrew as well. And if you look, there's even um, a incredible um, fungi, an agaricon mushroom, uh, on the top left side. It's so big that if it fell down, you would be killed by this falling mushroom. <laughs> it's so huge. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, this is Canada's largest tree, the Chiwat Giant. Um, this is a western red cedar near Chiwat Lake, which is 450 cubic meters in total size. How many people have seen the Chiwat, by the way? Anyone been to that? Pretty incredible tree. Um, so that's 450 telephone poles worth, or um, regular or second growth trees worth of wood in this one red cedar tree. And this was our mascot. This is the <laughs> Canada's gnarliest tree. I dubbed it Canada's gnarliest tree uh, in the Avatar Grove near Port Renfrew. Anybody hike to the Avatar Grove? Excuse me, okay. Well, this um, grove, we campaigned with the Chamber of Commerce in Port Renfrew to get protected uh, for several years. And finally, in 2012, we got this area saved. And so we no longer had our mascot, Canada's gnarliest tree, because it was already in a protected area. And we haven't been able to find a mascot since. We have Canada's nuttiest tree, but <laughs> that's never really taken off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, we also found, uh, found another amazing forest. Um, I don't know if you saw in Lord of the Rings. Uh, th this is the uh, tree beard, I guess the Ents in Lord of the Rings. We found an in, oops, incredible old growth deciduous rainforest, 400 year old uh, big leaf maples near Lake Cowichan, just off a little uh, tributary. Most of the big leaf maples are second growth in this province, but you have a few little clusters of these enormous epiphyte-covered uh, big leaf maples, which uh, would be great to get protected one day as well. This area, unfortunately, right now is unprotected. This is with some of the Halkaminum Treaty Group folks here. It's just completely draped in mosses and ferns, like uh, heaven on earth. I think it's the most photogenic forest I've seen, a deciduous old-growth temperate rainforest, almost every other uh, campaign's been over conifers. Um, so here's some maps. Uh, Around the time of um, European colonization, about 150 years ago, you would have had most of the coast would have been primary forests, mainly old growth um, in green. These are the productive, moderate to productive in green, uh, low productivity, uh, essentially bog forests or subalpine in, in light green, and a lot of alpine as well. And by 2012, the latest data we have, we've lost about 75% of the original productive old growth, moderate to high productivity, including about 90% of the valley bottoms. Um, this is Vancouver Island's protected area system. About 13% of the land base is protected within parks, but it's about 6% of the productive forest. The reason is there's a lot of alpine rock and ice within the park system, a lot of uh, low productivity old growth, um, subalpine as well as bog forest, which is why the statistics will vary. This is old growth, but there's a lot of um, this type of non-commercial old growth included in statistics you'll see. Our, our concern is about the moderate to high productivity sites where logging actually occurs. Um, oops, sorry, this is going. Uh, so a lot of what people ask is, why is there an issue if they um, replant the trees uh, with old growth forest? The reason we are working hard to protect old growth forest is big strides in the central coast that uh, Forest Ethics and Greenpeace have been working on. But down on the south coast, Vancouver Island, lower mainland, uh, we, we still have a, quite a ways to go. And um, the, the issue here is not whether or not trees grow back after you cut down old growth. It's a question of whether or not the ecosystem is adequately replicated by the ensuing second growth tree plantations, which are logged every 55, 60, 70 years on the coast. Um, nobody waits uh, you know, 400 years or 1,000 years again. So when you 
lose the old growth, you, you, uh, you essentially have lost it. Um, what are the differences? Okay, several big differences. There's a lot more woody debris in the old growth forests, standing in fallen dead wood. They're important for a lot of creatures. There's canopy gaps that let sunlight through, so you have well-developed understories. Um, as a result of a lot of these differences, um, uh, uh, canopy gaps, uh, multi-generations of trees growing up in those canopy gaps, well-developed understories, woody debris. You got a, uh, several old-growth obligate species, things that need old-growth forests. Spotted owl in the lower mainland, marbled murelets, another old-growth species you'll find in the canopy. You'll f find vose swifts, another uh, uh, old-growth dependent uh, species, and several uh, subspecies of hippies and protesters. <laughs> they live in. <laughs> you lose the old growth, then you lose them as well. Uh, <laughs> Um, old growth forests also are important for, uh, for um, spawning uh, sushi or salmon. <laughs> they're, they, they conserve uh, water, um, they're, they're, they're uh, ways, a means to stabilize the soil, but time is running out. So um, we are working hard for a, a provincial old growth strategy, a science-based provincial old growth strategy that would cover the, uh, all the endangered ecosystems across the province, including the south coast, the BC inland rainforest, the BC interior drier forest types as well. So what we're recommending is that there be um, uh, several things. One, the first thing is a much more extensive science-based protected area system and forest reserve network. The big strides forward, of course, are in Haida Gwaii in the Great Bear Rainforest, um, and there may be big strides moving ahead in, in the Clackwood area. Um, after you d decide uh, where to log or where not to log, the protected areas network and reserve network, then the other issue is how much to log. It's the allowable annual cut. How much is in total is being cut, and that's contingent on the... Um, on the uh, rotation age, which is, we believe, way too short, um, that's the most important issue, is the total amount being cut is too much, too fast. It's gotta be reduced. And then the third issue is around um, the issue of how to cut, essentially, forestry practices. We need more, in the coastal ecosystems where you didn't get the big disturbances, more um, selective uh, forestry, larger riparian zones, um, uh, better road engineering standards, a variety of initiatives to ensure that logging is more sustainable. The first thing is first is protected areas network. Second is the rate of cut has to be reduced. Third is the method of forestry. Um, so yeah, look forward to your comments and questions. Thanks so much. Yeah.